In today's video we're gonna be showing you the Radeon Vegas Frontier Edition's mining hash rates. It has 16GB of HP2 memory that is double of a regular Vega. But will it make a huge difference? Let's find out. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the look of this graphics card. It has a blue brushed aluminum finish with yellow stickers and LED lightings. It's a really odd combination. So it also contains the two 8-pin connectors on the top of the graphics card that also contain the indicator power draw lights. But if you turn those onto red, it's gonna look even more messy with three different colors. So I recommend turning it onto blue. So the graphics card has a HDMI connector and three display connectors on the front of the card and it also is pretty pricey because it comes at a $964 on Amazon and that is actually pretty expensive for a mining graphics card. So let's grab this graphics card and stuff it into our computer and see the mining results. Okay so let's go over the Ethereum mining benchmarks first. It was doing 32.15 megahertz per second and drawing 270 watts on the stock settings of the graphics card. When we increased the memory to its very maximum of 1100 megahertz, it did 35.5 megahertz per second, drawing still the 270 watts it was drawing on the stock settings. When we overkilled it and increased the power limit by 50%, it was drawing 375 watts and did 37.5 megahertz per second, so this was absolutely not worth it. When we clocked it down with a power limit of decreasing it by minus 20, it did 30.9 megahertz per second, drawing only 202 watts, so this was a way better result than all above. Next up was the Zcash mining benchmark, and as we all seen before on the Vega 64 and the 56, it was absolutely not worth it. We were drawing about 260 watts or 360 watts when we increased the power limit, but we didn't reach a very nice number. The only good setting it reached was 197 watts from the card, doing 417 solutions per second. But a GTX 1070 is drawing way less power, doing like even more hash rates. So Zcash mining is totally not made for Vegas. And last but not least, where everyone is probably been watching this video for, the Monero Crypto Mining Benchmark. When we used the stock settings, the card was drawing 254 watts and doing 2001 hashes per second. But when we increased the memory to its maximum, 1100 MHz, it only increased by 4 hashes per second. The power draw was still the same and I was questioning myself, did I do something wrong in the miner for example, because we can set our own specific settings. Because this graphics card has 16GB of HPM2 memory, I might be able to play with it and increase the hash rate. So I'm gonna try that out and see if it does make a difference. Because I noticed when I added 50% of the power to it, I was drawing 307 watts and we were still about in the range of 2025 hashes per second. So it increased so slim that I think it was just like limited on what it was capable of doing. But when we clock this graphics card to a really nice mining overclock, by decreasing the power by 20%, we came to a 1725 hashes per second, only drawing 197 watts. And this was actually really nice to see, because this makes it one of the most efficient cards I've ever seen. But there was one more thing we needed to try out, and that was the gaming performance of a name, the Frontier Edition. It has 16GB of HPM2 memory, but will this make it a better gaming graphics card? Let's find out!
Okay, so it scored 5922 with the HPCC memory disabled. But when we enabled it, we came to a really nice 6181 as a score. So this is not really the best I've seen so far, but it's pretty okay for a gaming graphics card. The blockchain drivers will always degrade the performance on gaming, by the way, so keep that in mind. But if you want to build yourself a AMD Vega build, you can always go to buried1.com and build your mining rigs over there. It's really easy, simple, I pick the parts for you and you just buy them and install your mining rig. I make sure that they all fit together because most people make some little mistakes like different CPUs or RAMs that they need for their motherboards. So keep that in mind, it's pretty simple to do and straightforward. I also added the 1050 Ti and 1070 Ti builds onto the webpage because a lot of you guys have requested that. Also one more thing, I'm going to benchmark the RX 56, 64 and Vega Frontier Edition against each other to see the difference in performance on the next mining benchmark. Hope you all enjoyed the video, see you guys in the next one.